What's going on? This is Jeremy Munoz, and this is my chemistry project. My project is going to be over zinc. The chemical symbol for zinc is Zn, and it looks like this. It is the first element of group 12. Its atomic number is 30. Its atomic mass is 65.39. It has a density of 7.133 grams per cc. It has a melting point of about 419.53 degrees or 692.68 Kelvin. While its boiling point is 910 degrees Celsius or 1183 Kelvin. And the electron configuration looks something like this. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about zinc. Although it's been used in the ancient times by the Asians, Greeks, Chinese, and Romans, it was only isolated by Anton von Schwab in 1744, but was only documented or discovered by Andreas McGrath in 1746 in Germany. Some important features of zinc are, it's not considered to be toxic, it's essential for your health, but like all the good things, too much of it can be bad for you. It's a bluish, silver, and lustrous kind of metal that tarnishes in moist air, which can produce a layer of carbonate. Zinc can also react with both acids and alkalis. And now moving on to values of modern chemistry. It can act as both a container and an electrode in zinc carbon batteries, meaning that these batteries right here have zinc on the inside that's used for the energy and zinc on the outside to help coat everything up. It's an essential trace element for both plants and animals. And it's also used in sunblock, makeup, and in ointments such as calamine lotion. Now moving on to some advancements in modern chemistry. Right now, as we speak, there is a refuelable zinc slash air battery that is being developed at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. It has the capability to be used in forklifts, delivery vans, and possibly even the modern vehicle. What this battery does is it promises to give all electric vehicles the attractive features of a gas-driven car, such as allowing users to go over 250 miles on a single charge, having a very small charging time of only 10 minutes, and even to have highway safe acceleration. Adventure John Cooper, as you can see right here, also helps to allow users to be able to refuel while on the road, only if needed to, of course. This battery isn't meant for all vehicles, it's only meant for electric cars, but in the future, if this battery succeeds, there really won't be much of a difference between electric and gas. Just the conservative part. Now on to some modern and important uses of zinc. It's used to make nickel, silver, and alloys. And these alloys can be used for die casting in car industry. They can be used to make vitamins. And if they combine with copper, they can make brass. <laughs> This element can also be used in the rubber industry, concrete manufacturing, and it can be used in paint. And now I have a wonderful fun fact to share with you. Zinc can actually help your body develop property and to help it grow as well. For example, it can boost your immune system, it can treat your acne, heals wounds, provides you with proper sense and smell, and it makes your proteins and DNA. So in conclusion, zinc is actually a really important element. They can do all sorts of things like I've just shown you in this presentation. We would still have zinc even if no one had discovered it. But the discovery has actually opened a lot of new doors for the chemistry world. And I hope to work with this awesome element one day. Thank you for watching my chemistry project. Here are my sources. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy Munoz for the experiment. Go ahead. Thank you, Jeremy. You're welcome, Jeremy. And now I'm going to show you the experiment that I did in chemistry. Good thing I didn't blow anything up. Okay. So what I have right here, I have some zinc metal and it's in a powder form. And as you can see, I've already poured some in there. 
Let's see that? Yeah. Okay? And now, let me just take it. Here it is. In this other bowl right here, I have I have some iodine, and these are iodine crystals. And I'm gonna just pour a little bit more in there so I can get some more crushed up part. There we go. Okay. So now what I must do, I must break these up. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour a little bit of each in this petri dish here. First the iodine crystals. And then for the zinc. Alright. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix it up with the stirring rod. Crush it up a little bit more. Should be good enough. Alright, so now what I have to do, I have to pour some water in there. So I'm going to go over here and get some water from this faucet right here. Okay. So now, here goes the experiment and y'all may want to stand back a little bit. Just make sure it won't. Okay. And let's see if I mix it right. All I need is just one drop. Okay. So let's try this one more time, and then I'll explain y'all what's going on. A little bit. here is there is heat being generated by this exothermic reaction and it causes the, the iodine to create that pretty purple thing cloud that you just saw. Don't smell the smoke. What is your summer going to do? It's Oh. 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 Oh.